Hello everybody, back here again for our vlog of day, and today is Sunday the 3rd, and today was a lovely, gorgeous, beautiful day outside, um, stunning, stunning weather, it was absolutely amazing. I woke up after a couple hour nap in a hammock, um, tied some trees, were outside a uh, visitor center in Kentucky at a rest stop, so Bruce was laying there below me, I had his bow out there and stuff, and didn't want to leave him in the car because we're the only two trees that were close enough I could tie my hammock again. We're a long ways away from the car. And I was afraid somebody would think I'd abandon my dog and I'd break my windows or whatever. So I slept out there in the bed or anything. I swear like every half an hour he would get up and bump into me to make sure like I was still in the hammock. And or to let me know that he was mad because he was sleeping outside. And that was probably, I think it might be the first time he's ever actually slept outside um, at night. Like he'll sleep during the day and take a nap and stuff. But it might be the first time he's ever forced sleep out there overnight. Um, he's usually inside a van, a car, a truck, something. He's never had to sleep out like that. So uh, that was, didn't realize until just now it hit me, the fact that he's maybe actually never slept outside before now, or at least not in the last, you know, four years. So definitely um, kind of interesting that whole process. So got up from there. I, I was, I don't know, maybe two, two and a half hours of sleep and started heading up north. Um, hit a couple of dog parks, um, had just a great time visiting with some awesome people and stuff. Um, one of the dog parks was packed. Bruce had a blast, absolutely had a blast running around, chasing and being chased and all that good stuff. We just, I just continued driving up. Um, Bruce was mad because he was pouting because the freezer was taking up part of his back seat and he didn't like that too much. So he got over it though, finally made it home, um, got the car unpacked. What the heck, got a couple things done real quick. Changed my running gear, head over to, uh, out for my run. On my run, I stopped by my grandfather's house, um, talked to him a little bit. Last time we spoke, he called me and asked me to stop by. I told him I was in Florida, and he said, well, when you get back in town, stop by. So I had been in town for, I don't know, two hours, maybe three hours at most, and uh, stopped by to talk to him in that, and he really didn't tell me anything to talk about, I guess. So it was just like as if nothing had ever changed. Um, he talks about nothing um, actually going on. Didn't ask where I was at the funeral, didn't ask any kind of stuff, which I never even was actually told when the funeral was even going to take place or if they've even had it. So went ahead and just kind of just, I don't know, normal life for him is just not talk about anything real. Um, talked about all kinds of random dumb stuff from trailer um, breaks to anything and everything except anything important. So went ahead, my aunt um, stopped back by, didn't know she was in town or I might have taken off a little bit sooner. But um, we talked a little bit, and it's just that weird. I don't know. I just feel so phony when I'm around talking to her. She claims that, you know, she cares and blah, blah, but I never hear from her and that kind of thing. So I've gotten tired of reaching out and trying to, um, I don't know, make her part of my life when she has no interest in being a part of my life. So same as my grandfather. Um, he has no interest in talking about anything real. So it was one of those things that happened. I mentioned I just got back from Florida. And she asked if I was down there for a racer training, and I was like, nope, that's kind of where I live now. So that's what happens um, at the hell. And I was like, been living there, you know, for months now, and nobody on that side of the family knows shit, and nobody cares. So my grandfather heard us talking, and I was like, he didn't even hear it. So I have no clue. It's just that whole, this nobody, I don't know. I don't know if, like, the whole family is autistic or what. Like, they have no ability to comprehend and contact things like we virtually didn't even speak about the fact that my grandmother died. You know, we didn't hardly speak about the fact that, you know, and like it barely even came up in passing. So the one thing he did talk about was how um, she wanted to try and get into the dentist to get her teeth worked on because I mentioned my tooth broke. That's one of the reasons I came up before the race, actually all the way to Iowa instead of going straight to Kansas, was to get my tooth fixed at my dentist's office. And she said how luckily when my grandmother had tried to get her teeth fixed a few months back, whatever, that um, the dentist couldn't get her in. So how much money he saved by not fixing her teeth? Because all she would have done was just, you know, turn around and died anyway. And I thought, was, well, yeah, what if the infection from the teeth and the bad teeth and the rotten teeth is power what killed her? So who knows? I don't know. You live into your 80s and long enough lifespan, I guess, in most people's lives. So he was just really excited the fact that he'd saved all that dental money at this, I don't know, it seems so damn weird. There was nothing important really being talked about and it just got old really really quickly so it is what it is and life moves on so I finished up my run I came home um, got cleaned up um, went to the store got some pop got some water I needed to make some tea um, grab some chips and then ended up buying a couple tenor lines one for me one for mom and basically headed back home also bought a um, Powerball ticket 
like I make a million or so who knows I might be super rich right now just waiting to find out if that's true or not so anyway that's all I got for now I will talk to you guys tomorrow have yourself a safe wonderful day thanks for watching